Hi, I'm Daryl Wong. I'm the Farm Site and Research Lands Manager here at the Center for Agroecology and Sustainable Food Systems. Today we are going to go over quickly how to calibrate a grain drill. Um, we're going to work on a Thai uh, model drill or Thai brand drill, uh, but many drills are calibrated in a similar way. So the most important things um, that we have, we'll do a basic of the tools that we're going to use. Um, one is uh, just an inner divider for the grain drill. This is for us to singulate uh, what seed comes out of what hoppers. And then a very high tech um, uh, seed catching bucket. Um, you can see this is just a gallon pot with duct tape around the edge and a wire that's poked through the top. Um, we're gonna use this to catch the seed uh, and then weigh it out. The theory behind all this is that um, we have flags marked out um, at 100 feet. We're gonna drive this drill uh, for 100 feet, um, only letting seed out of three lines. Um, we're gonna catch that seed into this then we'll go ahead and weigh the seed out um, and we'll use that, multiply that number, um, we'll divide by three to get an average, multiply it by 13 because it puts out 13 rows um, and that will give us roughly how many pounds an acre uh, of seed we'll put out. So the first thing that we're going to do is put the divider in and you can see this is a, a piece of probably um, maybe half inch plywood. Um, that has some duct tape on the edges to keep it somewhat secure in there. And you can see that it's cut to a unique shape to actually fit the inside of the hopper. So here you can see there's one, two, three lines that we'll be running. So the next step is to put our seed catchment uh, container here. So I'm gonna hook this over the bar. And then what we'll do is just pop these hoses out from where they normally put seed in. We'll put all three of them in here. Now it doesn't matter so much if there's twists or turns in the hoses, because um, we'll shake these out to make sure we get all the seed out. The point is that, again, we're catching the amount of seed that um, is left from the hopper uh, uh, into each of these lines, so we can calculate it. So the, the next step we're gonna do is actually set um, how open each of those holes are for each of the lines. Um, as you can see, there's actually rulers here um, that correspond to each hopper and because, or to each, um, to each hole, and because those don't line up exactly, we put three together to take the average. Um, so because we've done this before, and because we've kept good records up here, and we, um, what we've done in the past is just written what the mix is, um, for how many pounds an acre we want and what the measurement is on that. So we want to go about 300 pounds an acre for a mixed legume cover crop, which means we need to set this at about 7 eighths. So the way that you adjust how open the holes are is you come to the end of the grain drill. Sometimes there's um, lock nuts, sometimes they're a little nicer like this, but there's two um, so that you can lock it in place when it's actually calibrated which means that you work them against each other so that it won't move. Um, but for actually lengthening the amount of space in, we just have to hit this with a hammer. What's important because it's a thread is that we bring this part all the way out so that we're actually just hitting this metal piece and not damaging the threads of the screw, of the, um, the bolt. So I'm gonna tap this and you can see that it's starting to move closer in. Okay, so I'm going to continue to tap to try to get to about 7 eighths. So now we have it where we want it to be. If I wanted to actually shorten that distance down from 7 eighths, what I would do is turn this to the right. So again, the threaded bolt will just shift the whole shaft towards me. Um, but because it's where we want it to be, what I'm going to do is slowly turn this back and turn these in opposite directions so that these lock together. Again, so now it, these two aren't gonna let it move one way or the other and it's locked in place. So now we're gonna load the seed in. Again, I've got this divider in place. We actually just put a small bag of seed here to hold it so it doesn't move at all once I actually put seed in. So I'm gonna pour enough that all the holes are covered. 
um, but I'm not gonna fill this all the way up um, just in case I need to uh, take more seed out. Um, sometimes shortening the shaft requires you to actually take the seed out, which sometimes we'll do with the vacuums with the um, shop vac. And now it's time to drive. I just drove 100 feet and the important things to think about um, when doing this are one, that you drive the tractor at the same speed and the same gearing at the same RPM uh, that you would, that you're gonna drive um, to drill your seat at because that's gonna affect the rate. Um, the other thing is that as best you can, you stop and start um, with the flag lined up um, with uh, a, the same point, whatever you decide is your starting point. So I decided to start with the flag lined up with the A-frame um, at the beginning, and so I stopped with it lined up here at the end. Again, so we have uh, an accurate measure of 100 feet. So just a couple basics of the grain drill um, in terms of understanding what it is and how it works. Um, this wheel in here that runs underneath the three-point hitch, um, this um, runs our chain and actually turns the shaft that allows the seed to come out of the hopper. So when you're setting it up, adjusting the length of your top link, um, or the height of your implement, you want to make sure that that's on the ground moving whenever you're running the drill. Um, as we move around to the back, you can see each line that it puts out has um, uh, a little tube, which is what the seed comes down. It has these, which are called double disc openers. So you can see they're angled in a way that they slightly peel the soil away and allow for the seed to drop down um, deep. Um, these are really nice because they allow you to cut through quite, quite a bit of trash in the field. So if there's leftover residue um, in organic matter, um, these will go through rather nicely. Uh, and then these are the tamp wheels on the back. Um, and these just for any soil that falls back on top of the channel that's made by the double discs, the tamp wheel allows for the soil to come back and it pushes it up to the seed so you have good seed soil contact. Um, the, the depth of these um, can be adjusted with uh, these springs here and these springs here in terms of how hard it tamps, um, as well as uh, the height of the actual, um, this kind of overall shoe here. So those are the basics. Now that we've done this, what I'll do is disconnect our collection hopper, our collection bucket here. And you see, I'm just gonna give each of these lines a little bit of a shake to get all the seed out. You can see we have a small amount of seed. So now we'll take this over um, to our scale and weigh it out. So now we've got our seed. Um, we here use the, our farmer's market scales since it can give us accuracy to um, the hundredth of a pound. Um, I go ahead and just put a bucket on here and tear it. I'm gonna put it into that bucket and then take my reading and I have uh, 1.1 pounds. So because this came out of three different lines, I'm gonna take um, the average per line, which would be 1.1 divided by three, which is our average is 0.36666. And we have this sheet, which we'll make available, which is basically calculated the number of um, pounds um, per a single line over 100 feet um, will give us about 293 pounds an acre. So we're very, very close here. Um, ideally, we wanted to get to 300. Um, so we'll go ahead and adjust this a little bit up. But overall, you can see how we've done it. Just so you know how the um, calculations work in here, um, the, what we're calculating is that the 13 lines drop over the course of six feet. Um, and six feet by 100 feet, um, you have 6,000 square feet, uh, and then your number of acres would be that divided by 43,560 square feet in an acre, um, which gets you to 0 0.016 acres. Um, so if we divide the total number of pounds that would come out from 13 lines um, by the number of acres that we have, will give us the pounds of acre when we actually start running the equipment. 